Welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason Leduc. This is the fourth Thursday of the month here in Las Vegas. It's a it's a pretty cloudy day here in Las Vegas today. It's winter time here, but we're back. We're here talking with Ashley Jordan, the founder of My Education Connections. Uh, Ashley's the owner of My Education Connections, which has taken on the mission of helping families make informed decisions about college and affordability. And I really want to get into that because mm-hmm. uh, you and I had a great conversation last week about this whole thing. Yes. Um, You've been a teacher, mm-hmm. so you know how confusing and stressful, as, as well as having been a college student. Yeah, <laughs> that too, both, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know how confusing and stressful the college application process can be for families, and you're here to share how she can help your family make the right decision for you. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. It is, yeah, it's a little cloudy today, but... <laughs> it's okay. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it here in Las Vegas. It's uh, happy. So tell us about you. Uh, your background, and what made you start this business? So I was a teacher. Um, I graduated from college in three years, and I got done teach. I got done with my college, you know, uh, career, and I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I went in teaching at-risk youth, um, and these were students that were credit deficient for graduation, mm-hmm. um, and so they were struggling to graduate. And we really wanted to make sure that they had all opportunities, especially for after um, they finished high school, and they just really were not sure of what to do. They had no idea what to do, how to pay for it, where they wanted to be um, career-wise. And so it was really kind of devastating. And I was trying to kind of get them help with, and these were at risk youth, so I was trying to get them help with Mm -hmm. places to live, places to stay. Some of them were sleeping on the bus and then Mm -hmm. coming to school. So it was really kind of devastating. And so college was just kind of like this dream. Um, And so when I found this assessment years later um, that really helped align student interests and aptitudes with their best choices for not only college, but also for major to really get them on the right track to begin with, um, I thought this was phenomenal and something that was really needed within the community um, for students. And that's something that you bring to this that I I don't know if it's unique, but it's it's very impressive the way you bring these science-based assessments into helping kids figure out what what their options are, maybe not what the one right path for them right, is, but, exactly. but what are what are the what are those branches on that path they could take? Can you tell us something about these assessments and how they help yeah. you help families? Right. So our assessments are we're actually developed by psychometricians at Baylor University. Um, they're extremely reliable, so they have a mm-hmm. 0.85 reliability rating, um, Cronbaugh Alpha, which is basically a test retest reliability. Right. So it could be one. One, yes, one is the yes. most. So one is the highest, and most you know industry is anywhere from you know 0. 0.69 to 0.92. Um, so ours is considered excellent in terms of that test retest reliability, um, and so it really gets at the heart of what is this what not only what the student is good at, right, but um, also like what they're passionate about and what they're interested in, and it provides them with not only um, you know best fits in terms of you know the the most careers that they would have been exposed to, but also things they may not have even thought of, um, and we also are connected to own which has um, additional recommendations for the student as well that they can explore. So, How often do you find that a kid is set on something? They're set on maybe one path and they take this assessment and they realize there's there's options for them that they didn't mm-hmm. consider and they start to pursue those options. I would say probably 90% of the time, um, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that existed. And so what traditionally has happened is students will graduate high school, they'll get into college and they'll be like, okay, you know, I'm familiar. They're exposed to careers right around them. So teachers, mm-hmm. nurses, you know, a doctor, they don't really realize what's all out there and what opportunities are available to them. And so I think probably the biggest thing is um, that they are just like, hey, I didn't even know this existed. Right. I didn't know mm-hmm. that you could do something like this. And this is like just it fits me perfectly. And I didn't realize I was out there. And so a lot of times students have to then go back to school once they realize this is out there after they get into the working field. Mm-hmm. So not only are they in debt from going to school for something that they didn't even really like or want to pursue, but now they have to go back to school again, take out more debt, more, you know, get in those loans mm-hmm. and get in this kind of, you know, like, hey, is this ever going to is this ever going to end kind of thing. So our goal is to really make sure that students are prepared prior to entering into college so that they can really put their best foot forward, graduate on time. Um, mitigating the debt and the loans that they have to take out so they can really have a good start to their future. That's awesome. Um, Now, one of the things I want to talk about, because what the kid wants to do and what the kid's thinking about is really important, right? Yeah. However, families, parents are thinking about this as well. Mm -hmm. Besides what the kid wants to do and besides affordability, because we've talked about how important that is, what are some of the things that families, parents, grandparents, caregivers um, should be thinking about as they start to help guide 
their student through these processes um, besides just what the kid wants to do. Right, exactly. So here's the thing. When my um, when I told my dad, because I wanted to be a teacher for the longest time, and um, and then I, but I kind of had a phase, and I don't know, most 14-year-old girls have this phase. They, you know, I wanted to be a fashion designer. So I told my dad, I said, yeah, dad, that's what I want to do. And he's like, you know what, I think you need to take some art classes and really see if that's something that you yeah. like. I, I took art classes and I hated it, right? And so I realized that just wasn't for me. But I did this while in high school, not when I got to college. And mm -hmm. so I was able to explore those areas of interest while in high school where it wasn't costing us any money. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was an elective that I could use to graduate. So it really didn't matter, right? And I was like, hey, I hated it. I got an A in the class. I moved on and I realized that's not for me. Um, so I you know, went back to the, the teaching that I had kind of wanted to do when, when I was younger. And so my dad was a smart guy, right? He didn't just tell me like, no, that's a silly dream. And you know, what's wrong with you? Be, be mm -hmm. realistic, which I think is what a lot of times parents, they're like, hey, be realistic, right? You have to make a living mm -hmm. and you, this is a hard career to go into. And what are you thinking? Right. Explore those areas of interest. If your student is really interested in art or they're really interested in drama or they're really interested in writing, have them be in yearbook, right? If they, if they're, if they're a photographer, they really like photography, go to yearbook, take a photography class, mm -hmm. make sure it's something that they like while they're in high school where it's not costing you yeah, anything. Don't, don't yeah. get involved in social media though. There's no, <laughs> there's no money in any of this. Right, so. exactly. But ser seriously, explore those areas of interest while it's not costing thousands of dollars and it's affecting the timeline yeah. for graduation for college. So, so your dad let you figure it out for yourself yeah. and there, <laughs> there, there, there are opportunities to do that. Uh, and that brings us to when should a family be starting to think about this? Yes. So, and that's a great question. And it's one thing that I, I get a lot of. Um, and I, I say, I'll say this and people will be like, oh, that's way too early. And it's really not. I, I always say we need to start thinking eighth grade um, because especially in the Valley. So we're in Las Vegas. We have a wonderful community um, of magnet schools mm -hmm. that offer great areas of specialization for students. So if they're starting to think about being interested in a certain area, they can actually go to a high school that specializes in that. So we have performing arts. We have firefighting, we have sciences, we have medical programs, nursing, CNA programs. I mean, the list is endless. And so to start thinking about that in eighth grade, you have to actually apply um, in January, by January. So you need to start thinking about that in the beginning of eighth grade. It seems really young, but it's really something that could give them a really great start um, and really help them explore those areas of interest in a really specialized environment um, while they're still young. And also making sure that they're doing well grade-wise as soon as they get to high school. Oftentimes parents will think, oh, freshman year, they don't really look at that, right? Mm -hmm. No, they're looking at your entire GPA. They're looking at what classes you're taking, right? GPA, course rigor, and then your metrics like SAT, ACT tests are kind of third in line. So mm -hmm. it's really, really important to make sure that you're thinking about grades and you're thinking about coursework the entire time you're in high school. I think that's a, that's a great point. Well, so one, it's eighth grade's not too early to take this assessment, right? No, no. Yeah, our assessment so, is actually um, meant for 14 and up, age 14 okay. and up. So, so yeah. eighth grade's the mm -hmm. perfect time to take yep. this. Before you start thinking about what school your kid wants to go to, what what high school your kid um, might want to pursue things, or if they aren't sure to go to a high school, they have op opportunities to pursue lots of different things, exactly. right? So, exactly. so that's important to think about early as well. So we've talked a lot about the kid and what they're going to do, but as as we often overuse in our society it takes a village right right exactly. so what are what are some of the roles and responsibilities that teachers have parents have and even the student has to make this a successful process no matter what the outcome where they end up in college what are some of the roles responsibilities what are the things they each need to take on so i definitely think and, and i'm very big on like the triangular approach right so when you're teaching and they teach you this right they teach you this idea of it takes a village but it really takes the teacher the parent and the student right and they're working mm -hmm. together within the community to make sure that you know the educational experience is the best for the student um, and that the parent is involved and that the teacher you know knows and everybody's on the same page mm -hmm. and ultimately for students and for parents they really need to make sure that they are starting as early as possible so Jason and I had met last week and we were mm -hmm. talking about you know what what parents of students that get into Ivy Leagues know that most of us don't right and that's kind of the thing is that they start as early as possible so they will actually start they'll get a college advisor they'll start prepping for ACT SAT tests, they will have it mapped out by the time their student is in middle school. And it's kind of crazy to think about, but that's really what we should be doing. By eighth grade, we should be thinking about what high school, but also we should be looking at, okay, over this summer, let's start prepping for these, these standardized tests that really, unfortunately, determine a lot of our students' future and their ability to get acceptance and, into schools. And there's a so. way to do this smartly mm -hmm. where you can 
keep options open, do the steps you need to take, but still let your kid be a kid. Oh too, yeah, right? absolutely, absolutely. Right. So I, I, I don't want anyone to get no, the impression no. that we're that we're talking about. Okay, let's let's drive these kids into the ground. <laughs> it it kind of comes down to not being outcome dependent on what college they get into. Right. And what we really want to be focused on is what are the steps we can all take to make them successful yes. regardless of the outcome. Yeah, and that's another thing, too, that I'm totally against. Like, I, as a teacher, I did not ever give a lot of homework. I just didn't think it was that. I mean, this is controversial, but I just didn't ever think it was that effective. Um, you know, we definitely want to make sure that the students have learning opportunities outside of the classroom. But ultimately, the student does need to be a kid. And so by starting early, we're actually mitigating the stress. Because mm -hmm. what we're doing to these 16-year-old students that are juniors in high school, they are taking some of their most rigorous coursework. They are then having to apply for scholarships, think about colleges, and then what, let's add on, right, their SAT, ACT study. So study program. And so it's insane that what we're doing. And so if we start little by little and really get a plan, we're actually mitigating the stress, we're mitigating the dread, right, the panic, the anxiety from both the student and the parent. And we're also helping them guide them to take these classes along the way that could really be a great way to say, hey, is this a good fit for you? Do you actually like this? And that's what we're talking about is find their passion, find what they like, and then help them explore those options um, in, a real, in a way that the timeline is much longer than what we're traditionally thinking of it as. All right, well, we'll have you back sometime to talk about the pros and cons of homework <laughs> and how much homework, because I know that is a, that's a huge deal that's a right huge now. That's a, that's a huge yeah. conversation right now. But before we let you go and have you come back for a panel discussion, tell everybody how they can reach you and My Education Connections. So um, you can actually reach me on my website. It's just www.myeducationconnections.com. Um, and then you can also, and that's my website, and that has all of my contact information. Um, it also has information on our services and information on resources, free resources for parents and students. So. All right, great. Well, thank you for being here. We're going to bring you back for the panel discussion. And I just want to jump in on this. It's December right now. I don't know when you're watching this, but we're, <laughs> we're filming in December. It's actually really great timing if you've got that eighth grader or even that freshman in high school coming to see Ashley and trying to set up what the right plan for your family is to help your students. So I'm Jason LaDuke. This is Geeks Are Sexy. We'll be right back with Cynthia Nutter. Thanks, Jason.